Hello again, in this part of the course we're going to get some basic information about B2 first. Let me begin by the results of your self-assessment. So I ask you to rate your own performance as compared to the descriptors for B2. The slides that I'm going to show you will present your perceived weaknesses, that is, I will only talk about the things where you didn't consider yourself strong enough to succeed at the test. Let's begin by describing what the graph shows. I ask you to rate your performance, for example, I can understand in detail what is said to me in standard spoken language, even in a noisy environment. And I ask you to rate to what extent you agreed or disagreed with that statement. So, the blue color means strongly agree, that means that you were sure that you could do that. The red color indicates agreement and in this case you say that you can do that. Neutral is when you're not sure if you can do that or not and of course disagree and strongly disagree show that you are not sure or you're very sure that you cannot do that. Okay, So let's begin by this one and if you see in this case for this part concerning listening about just a little more than 50% of the people consider that they find it difficult to do this. Okay, So then listening can be uh, considered one of the skills that you consider that you need more practice with. Uh, there is another part concerning listening and if you see in this case the percentage of people who are sure that they can do this is even lower. In this case, it's understanding the main ideas of propositionally and linguistically complex speech on both concrete and abstract topics delivered in a standard dialects, including technical discussions in my field of specialization. So we need to work on this area. Another area where you think you need improvement is related to the spoken interaction. And in this case, if you see, there are a great number of people who think that they will have problems to initiate, maintain, and end discourse naturally with effective turn taking. So this is another area where we could work so that we can improve this perceived weakness. Another ability that you think you need to improve is exchanging considerable quantities of detailed factual information on matters within my field of interest. This is part of, of course, of spoken production and we'll certainly work on it. The same thing happens with engaging in extended conversation in a clearly participatory fashion on most general topics. Then again, I think this is something that you feel that you need to work on and so we'll devote an important part of the course to working on speaking skills in general. There are two other things that you need to improve concerning spoken production. First of all, accounting for and sustaining your opinions in discussion by providing relevant explanations, arguments and comments. So this is part of what we call discourse competence and I think it's very important that you develop it because you're going to need it a lot for the oral interview in B2 first. Finally, constructing a change of recent argument linking your ideas logically. This is another part where you think that you need help. And so, like I said before, we're going to work on speaking skills. We're going to try to help you to prepare for the oral part of the exam. Now, concerning the quality of the language, what you perceive as a weakness is your ability to produce stretches of language with a fairly even tempo, although you could be hesitant as you search for expressions with few noticeably long pauses. In other words, it, this is fluency, okay? So you think that you need to improve your fluency, and of course, fluency is a very important part of B2. B2 means I can speak in a fluent way in English, so we'll work on this area as well. A second aspect of language quality that you think you need to improve is passing on detailed information reliably. So definitely we will try to work on improving your quality of language so that you can be prepared for the test.
finally concerning writing there are basically two texts two kinds of text that you think you need to help with the first one is the letter to the editor in which you have to give reasons for or against a specific point of view and the second one is developing an argument systematically in a composition or report emphasizing decisive points and including supporting details so then um, these are two kinds of texts that involve a lot of pre-writing that means out brainstorming outlining and then editing so according to this you will need to work on writing and plan these two types of texts so if we summarize the results of the self-assessment we will see that what you perceive as the areas where you feel very strong and confident are reading and strategies and on the other hand you think that you need to improve your listening ability your speaking ability both oral production and interaction and also the language quality and the writing so I will take this into account as we progress into the course a second important point that I want to talk about in this introductory module is the reason why we should choose B2 first and not another kind of test in order to decide what's the best test that we can take we need to look at something that is called test usefulness or in other words the qualities of language tests test usefulness is made up of six different important components first of all construct validity secondly reliability third impact for interactiveness five authenticity and finally practicality so how do you decide if a test is appropriate if a test is good for the particular objectives that you have first of all you need to make sure that the score of the test really reflects your real proficiency that is called constant validity and secondly of course you need to make sure that the scores of the test are consistent that they do not vary in other words every time that you take the test you should get about the same results the third important component of test usefulness is impact in, in this case we're talking about the effect that the test causes on people and institutions that means that the test should be recognized by a lot of people and institution the test should have a positive effect when you put it on your CV on your resume right that it stands out it gives you prestige it gives you validity up to an international level the next thing is interactiveness your test doesn't have to measure just your linguistic knowledge that is not just vocabulary and grammar but also the ability to express your points of view to talk about different topics that you that you can measure your intellectual abilities and of course authenticity is related to this because in this case the, the kind of task that you find in the test should resemble real language use that means that you're not going to be just circling or filling the blanks you you're probably going to be interacting with a tester you're going to be writing text or doing things that you will do in real life the final point is practicality and this means that the test should be easy to take and administer and it should not very should not be very expensive now when we talk about B2 first we can see that the test has a good, good level of comfortability it is reliable it has a positive impact it is interactive it is authentic and probably the only problem will be its practicality because it is an expensive test but that's why you need to prepare very well when you take it to make sure that your money is going to be well invested so if you want to certify your English level sometimes it's difficult to select an appropriate test and there are many options such as ELH2 or the TOEFL ITB, the TOEFL IBT TOEFL Junior is no longer for you because you're old enough to take the full version of the TOEFL there's also IELTS and of course APTIS is a new one the Cambridge, different Cambridge examinations and also the test of English for international communication and probably you can even go for the Trinity College exams such as the GC, the graduate the, the graded uh, exam in spoken English or the integrated skills in English now which is the best test of course 
you will select a different kind of test depending on your purposes. So here's my advice on what test to take depending on your situation and your objectives. First of all, if you only want to know what level you have, I think you should go for Aptis. This is a new test developed by the British Council and the advantage is that it's fast, it's practical and it is not very expensive. The price ranges between 675 pesos to 1369 depending on the version of the test and depending where you take it. But if you see, this is a really quick option that can allow you to determine pretty much what level you have without much trouble. Now, if your objective is to obtain your diploma, because you have this thing that is called uh, titulación automática, they will ask you normally to take the ITP version of the test. This is the paper base, the one that you take in the facultad, and of course, this is the exam that is normally taken. You should get 550 points. And the advantage of this test is that it's not very expensive. You can take it in school and it costs just about 940 pesos. However, if your objective is to get a scholarship to go study in the United States or the United Kingdom, then you should go for different kinds of tests. The FUPA organization, the one that administers the scholarships to the United States, requires that you take the TOEFL IBT. This is the computer-based full version of the TOEFL that assesses both receptive and productive skills and the price is around 4,287 pesos. Okay. If you want to go to the United Kingdom, in this case you will be required to take IELTS. And IELTS is another exam that is very complete, very accurate and of course very expensive as well because it price is around 5,000 pesos now. But these are the most recognized exams. If you really want to go study in the United States or in the United Kingdom, you should take either TOEFL IBT or IELTS. The disadvantage of, this, of these two tests is that they have a limited validity. That means that they expire after two years. If you take them, you need to make sure that you're going to use them in that moment because after two years you will need to take the test again because the result will no longer be valid. Now, what I think your case is, is that you want a permanent international certification. So you want a certification of your level that is international, that is valid, that is recognized and that does not have an expiration date. So in this case, there are two options. First of all, the Cambridge exam, such as the first for the level B2 or the proficiency for the level C2. You can see the prices there. And also Trinity College London, either the IC2 that measures the B2 level or the IC4 that measures the C2 level. You can see the prices there. So these exams are expensive, but the great advantage is that they guarantee that your certification will be permanent and that it will be valid internationally. So that's why I decided to prepare this course. I selected Cambridge over Trinity College London, not because Trinity College London has a lower quality, but because it's more difficult to take. There are few examination centers and of course it's an expensive test so I think Cambridge is the best option and in this slide you can see the different levels so the key English test measures A2 and then preliminary B1 then B2 first then C1 advanced and finally C2 proficiency those are the different levels that each test takes and of course I think you're interested in B2 because that is the level that you will be required to have at the end of your studies. Let's start by looking at the structure and the length of the test. The total length is 3.29 hours, that means like about 3 hours and a half. And it has four sections, first of all, the reading and use of English part that lasts for 1 hour and 15 minutes. Secondly, the writing parts with 1 hour and 20 minutes. 
and the third part is listening and this lasts about 40 minutes and finally the speaking interview is given on a separate date and it lasts 14 minutes this is the structure of the test and now let's see what each part contains there are seven parts in the reading and use of English section and the first one focuses on reading comprehension parts 2, 3 and 4 are related to language use that means grammar, vocabulary, discourse parts 5, 6 and 7 focus again on reading comprehension so this part of the test like I said before lasts for 1 hour and 15 minutes the writing section of the test contains two parts one compulsory which means an essay you always have to write an essay always now in the second part you can choose a task out of three different questions that they propose to you and the listening section lasts for about 40 minutes and there are four different parts some long interactions short interactions short monologues and then an interview or an exchange between two speakers with seven multiple choice questions now finally the interview assesses both spoken production and spoken interaction it lasts 14 minutes and there are four parts first there is a conversation between the tester and the candidate the second part is an individual long term for each of the candidates and then some questions and finally part three and four are two-way conversations between the candidates with written stimuli and spoken instructions so this is in general what the test looks like and in your classroom materials you will find a full example with a full test for you to look at it contains the audio files for the listening comprehension section and it has the answer key I strongly suggest that you look at it that you study it that you analyze and that you answer it for practice so this is it for this session now turn to your classroom documents because this week we'll start practicing on the reading and use of English section of the test